Watch. Hit it, boys. Tomato fights, but why fight, Peter, when you can fight back? See what I'm saying? Fight back. Ooh. Circling back, X tomato fights. It's our first tomato fight with multiple guests. What's up, fellas? It's Dave Carter Ruff, Will DeFreeze, and Hi. you know him from Dylan versus Dylan. <laughs> Dylan on Dylan. One of the stars. Oh, yeah. No, uh, yeah, Dylan on Dylan. What up, Dylan? Dylan on Dylan. Yeah, the most fun I've ever had uh, speaking into a microphone. So thanks for the. Uh, Invitation on that one, guys. Very happy to be here, by the way. Yeah, it's I too am happy to be here. I think yeah, you've I'm not going to slight my other two co-hosts, but I'm also happy to be here. <laughs> we had a good time. You guys are funny. <laughs> I think you've got a cleaner vision of what you're coming into uh, with this podcast as opposed to yeah. Dylan on Dylan. Or are you sure you are Dylan? Like, are you? Con- we gave you. We gave everybody instructions for like this is what the podcast is going to be. Do based on the last time, do you feel confident coming in that like I actually know what's going to happen? I have no idea what to expect at all. Uh, Dylan on Dylan, I, I kind of had an idea, and I still was way off. So I think the best way to prepare is just not to prepare and just kind of lie by the seat of my pants. Well, it's cool to be doing shit with you guys. Uh, Pete just got his uh, ears lowered. He's coming back from the old uh, from the old doctor. I figure if I got my ears lowered a little bit, it might make me look taller. Just like the top half of my head will be raised. We stand a short king here. Dylan That's just right. got a new haircut as well, actually. Yeah. It's funny enough. Bad haircut. We're not going to talk about it. It's not even it. bad. Can't notice you're wearing a ball cap. I cut. I kind of fade in the back. Fade. I did not ask for it. I asked for a block, as I always do, as I am a grown man. <laughs> Modern haircut. <laughs> it gave me a fade, so I'm not happy about it, but we're, we're moving on. A fade in the back is like a 22-year-old person thing. Like I don't think it's like a kid's thing, but it's definitely like a young man's game no right it's a, it's a young man's haircut a young man's game i'm 38 are age. you trying to stay relevant through your haircut no i'm trying to i'm trying to have an age appropriate look it's better to and get a fade in the back than a fade in the front yeah that's fair enough it's true you fair guys enough. ever are you gonna get a nike symbol in the back of your head next time i might get a, some kind of design like up here yeah what's your number type? in sports you gonna pop that in there i was 10 in high school nice you know me, me and vy not a big deal <laughs> nice. That's Vince Young. Pete knows. Any That's of right. you guys? Any of Pete? Pete I, National champion. Yeah. I, I, Wait, right. hold on. Pete knows who Vince Young is? Yeah. Big long How, one, how is he getting Pete's this? crazy smart. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever get your beers lowered? It's when you uh, raise a toast and then return whatever you're drinking to the normal height it should be. You guys ever do that? <laughs> that sounds like a that sounds like a catchphrase they'd use at Scissors and Scotch. <laughs> Wait, Nobody expl- knows that. Wait, explain again. What? What did you just say, Deej? <laughs> About the beers lowered? Yeah, it's when you. It's getting your beers lowered. It's when you raise a toast. And you. That's when your glass is up higher than it was before. Then you got to oh. put it somewhere, maybe to the mouth or to the. Maybe you put it back down if you're rude. It's that part of after you're done toasting. You ever do that? No. I think I understand <laughs> no. the disconnect here. Dylan. Dylan's not <laughs> been a part. You leave it up? You leave that when you uh, toast somebody? You just leave it there forever? <laughs> no, I put it down. I, dude, your arm's got to be hella tired. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dylan's never been a part of a toast. No, I'm pretty sure I have. No one's toasted nah, you. No, Dylan's too cool for toast. Can we can we focus on somebody else for a minute? I'm tired Dylan's always like, why is this dude talking with his glass in the air, dork? <laughs> just put your glass down, man. Yo, we actually have to do that, Pete. Next time we're out, we should raise a toast to somebody and then never put our hands down. <laughs> it just make him it's feel the really ultimate awkward. sign of respect, just never ending the toast. <laughs> yeah. You can break eye contact if you want. It's not recommended, but for sure... Keep it up. Yeah, just it, it's essentially just a Stein hoisting contest. That I do like the idea of of uh, suggesting that we all do a tomato fights, and it just turns into one v four. Dylan just the re- first, the rest of us, and it's yeah. just a roast. <laughs> See, I don't think that was a roast. That was just an interview. I asked, "Do you ever get your beers lowered?" You said, "Without question, fuck no. I will never lower." You said, "A man doesn't lower his glass." Some energy behind <laughs> basically it. Basically, what I didn't love. A sign of weakness. Basically, what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do a tomato fight. This is the by far the most peculiar matchup in that both movies 
are essentially the same. This is a matchup of 1998 insect-themed computer-animated kids' movies starring since-canceled Hollywood legends. It's Ants versus A Bug's Life. They're both 92s, which I would not have guessed. Is that was the most matchup? shocking thing for me out of this entire process. When I saw that it was 92, Peacock displays it, which is a, a very nice touch. And uh, when I saw it was 92, I, I couldn't believe how high it was. The most shocking thing to me was um, the very dark imagery portrayed in uh, G-rated kids' movies, particularly Ants. Well, it's, like just, it's, it's just a dark movie. So the, the only difference between these two movies on paper <laughs> is that one is rated G, one is rated PG, but the one that is PG, let's call it Ants, was like, that's like a PG where there was some sort of deal where the person who was rating the movie looked away where like you when you go to get a i don't know like your car inspected and they're like yo this car doesn't work it's dangerous but we're just gonna pass you anyway that's how ants got a pg it should be at least pg-13 or it was graded just relative to everything else that woody allen does and it was like oh yeah this is pg dark <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah I- i'm shocked these have the same score we'll we'll do uh movie by movie in a second, and then we'll wrap up with, with what we think is uh, better. But the first question we ask all of our guests is, uh, isn't Tomato Fights a good idea for a podcast? I'm going to give the floor to David. You know, I often I, – I, I had this idea for us uh, back in the day, and then it were, they were like, no, let's just do this other thing called the stream room where we watch a movie that none of our listeners will care about, and we put it behind a paywall. And then we did that, and it didn't really work out very well. But, yes, it's a great idea. All right. yeah, did you guys ever catch? You, you ever catch an episode of the stream room that we did? Electric stuff, <laughs> electric stuff. We just talked about an old movie that we thought was cool. Yeah, did, Tomato Fight. Or that cool did. one that you selected off Netflix. <sighs> what was that movie? That doesn't matter. Oh, the <laughs> Pest. No, we didn't do the Pest. The Pest has eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. If you guys want to have Dave back at any point, nice eight percent. That means it could go up against. Let's see. We don't have any eights. We can tell you, though, that I still know what you did last summer and New Year's Eve are both sevens. Well, if you put New Year's it, Eve, that's high for New Year's Eve. It's, it's pretty high for if New you year's put Eve. the pests together with ants, you get a perfect hundred. That's no. true. No, oh, the pest is eight. Right. I'm sorry. I was still was Leg Wazamo in either of these movies. I don't, I don't believe Shockingly so. not. I was we surprised that Leg Wazamo wasn't uh, in any, either of these movies. Like looking at the cast after after the fact, I was very impressed. Well, we love some good uh, pre-production shenanigans. And these two movies, I guess it's more about pre-release, but th- this movie caused a real war between Pixar and Disney Pixar, I guess, and DreamWorks because they both basically made the same movie that they were putting out at the same time. Or I should say same elevator pitch because very different movies that were both coming out at the same time. And... This resulted in Ants coming out first, but DreamWorks saying, or uh, Pixar saying, well, we're just going to put out Bugs Life against the movie you got coming out next month, which was The Prince of Egypt, I believe. So nobody really saw Ants. They all waited for a Bugs Life. No one saw Prince of Egypt. And Bugs Life just murdered both of these movies at the box office. Bugs Life, definitely the one that I think everyone remembered. And then Ants was kind of the other one, right? Correct. Which my one end. was, which one was DreamWorks and which one was Pixar? DreamWorks was Ants and Pixar was uh, was Bugs Life. Because the okay, this was 1998, right? The yep. animation, the animation in A Bugs Life, I thought was much better than the animation in Ants, despite them coming out the same year. Oh yeah, interesting. Agreed? Oh yeah, yeah. That's a big okay. yes for me. Um, okay. These two also were like this was early in the animated kids movie game or like a computer animated movie game toy story was 1995 and then these came out in 1998 a big thing with this is i believe it was a bug's life that had uh jerry's game the short the short with the old guy playing chess against himself before it's a good one right that was like a classic it's an all it's an all-time pixar short let's start with the movie that came out first Ants, this is a 92. It stars Woody Allen. It's got J-Lo, among others. And 
I'm going to give the floor to Dylan initially for just some general thoughts on Ants because you were texting me as you were doing your prep for this, and you seemed uh, stunned that this is a movie. Yeah, also, yeah, I, mean, I want to I... know, what, what's your exposure to these movies before uh, Tomato yeah, Fights? Like, have you heads? seen them? Have, have you uh, loved yeah, them? I had, prior to this, I had not seen either movie. I, I had heard of both, but I had not seen them. Uh, yeah, my my impression of Ants, uh, the first run through was I'm surprised. I was just very surprised that a um, a children's movie would include such just like I said it earlier, dark imagery and like the plot line. I mean, there was a, a violent battle scene uh, during which one ant survived, um, and then like the general played by Gene Hackman of the Ant Army. I mean, I got like, I got, I got like Hitler vibes from him. There was an attempted genocide, right? Mm-hmm. He he had he mentioned like wanting a quote unquote pure colony, um, which was the reason for the attempted genocide. We tried to drown, I don't know, half of the ant population. It was just a dark movie. I don't know. Yeah, one of my uh, notes was, do you know how many adult movies don't have a general played by Gene Hackman? Because that is just like too much for <laughs> even an adult movie. Like think of all like, like the grown up movies where like people die and get shot and everything, and they don't have that. That doesn't have a general played by Gene Hackman, and this does. And you're right. Like there's this guy's a tough customer. Yeah, he's, he is bad news. Yeah, he's a he's a real hard ass. I think like in like the first 15 minutes, he drops like, "Why are you always bitching?" To Woody Allen's character, and I was like, "Language I, is strong." It's like, you're allowed to say that in a kids' movie. <laughs> a lot of like hell, ass, okay. bitching, uh, like not not amazing. This is a real. I feel uh, like they're allowed like one swear word per like P- PG movie, and that's where they that's where they decided to let it fly. And PG thirteen movies are depending on the length and what they're doing are allowed like one breast. <laughs> or two breasts if it's Titanic. <laughs> uh, do you have a quick little uh, synopsis for ants? Uh, well, sure. I can just give you uh, Woody Allen plays Z, an anxious worker ant, and he's very concerned with his place in life, which I means he's an ant. He's probably going to die soon. So I think that m- more ants should maybe be as concerned as he is. But he goes to therapy. He's working on himself. He meets. Uh, a um he's friends with an aunt played by Jennifer Lopez who just like hangs out with him all the time and he meets and falls in love with a princess aunt i believe and is tasked with joining the army as part of a war on termites and then he realizes that Gene Hackman the general is bad news and is going to kill a bunch of his own people, slaughter them. So he must save the day. That was off the dome, and I think that that's the least horrifying way I can <laughs> yeah. explain that movie. Also, verbal meme, ants, my old house, war on termites. There it is. Oh, man. That's not the war you want to be fighting. No. I mean, yeah, that that does pretty much sum it up. He also uh, befriends uh, a soldier ant. Played by Sylvester Stallone, and there's the the sergeant, played by Danny Glover, who saves Z's life during that slaughter scene where everybody but one ant dies. By the way, the weirdest part of the movie, and I texted it to uh, Dylan, is that after that slaughter happens, where like they go off to fight and they get ambushed by these termites. And everyone dies, everyone except for Z, and he returns home to them hooting and hollering, whooping it up for him, holding up signs, one of which says, uh, let me see, I have it here. Uh, it, it basically says, we won one to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and let's, let's not forget, the only reason he does survive this battle is because he was trapped under a corpse, basically, in the battlefield, and he was just left there, like... It's just it's just a dark situation all around. Yeah, they, he comes back to the, the ant colony. Everyone's like, oh, oh yeah, we won. Every, everyone's all happy. Like, yeah, but you know, a lot of a lot of your people just just died on the battlefield. Yeah, like you couldn't 
if someone said run it back, you couldn't do it now. They're all I, I think it's worth noting in the battlefield scene. I read a, a scathing review of Ants last night after I watched it. And they noted, they said, I'll take the time here to note that they named the one ant voiced by a black actor who speaks in a thick Caribbean accent, Barbados. <laughs> it's a good point. It's <laughs> a good point. I mean, quite literally, I, I'm looking at the cast list here, and it Danny Glover is the uh, is it, the only uh, black man and black person in the movie. Wow. Yeah, and he is. But hey, it's a movie where you get to cheer for Woody Allen, so I think we all win there, right? Can I, let me oh, just no. offer this up. I watched this movie in the order of, or I watched both these movies, Bugs Life first, Ants immediately thereafter. I did not know, I had never seen Ants. I'd seen A Bug's Life when I was younger, didn't remember the plot. Ants had never seen, didn't know what it was about other than it was about ants. When I realized it was Woody Allen, 10 seconds in, I couldn't get past it. <laughs> I couldn't get past the romance. It creeped me out because, again, it's Woody Allen. The thought of Woody Allen and I know, like, his character in the movie isn't a kid, but the thought of him potentially being an ant child, it just weirded me out. And what, preying on other ant children? It well, just, I was well, going to okay, say, it, yeah, it doesn't help It doesn't help that a main plot point of the movie is that Woody Allen's character is, like, a creep and essentially kidnaps a woman against her will. Yes. Also, also says something at one point about having erotic thoughts. Yes, That's an actual yes. Line. I didn't like, I don't like seeing ants talk... Uh, in those in those terms, like as soon as dude, the, they, as the soon princess as and Azteca were kind of bad. <laughs> Look, the princess can get it, obviously, but it's Woody Allen. I mean, it's Princess Bora. <laughs> that's uh, that's Have right. Some respect, and uh, yeah, like as soon as he, she gets kidnapped and she like puts up a fight, he's he gets all pissy and he's like, "I was gonna share all my erotic fantasies with you," and she's like, "Just bring me home, please." <laughs> Yeah, this guy sounds like West Elm Caleb. Calm down, Z. Mm. It's a wow. Well, that was topical. That Will was very topical. Did. That's a good throwback. It's a weird ass world <laughs> that they live in. Uh, every day at six p.m., the worker ants are required to do a massive line dance together. Z <laughs> describes this as quote zombies capitulating to an oppressive system. <laughs> and I, I hate to do the like, what kind of kids movie is this thing? Because I like anything that. That kind of goes for it and isn't exactly what you would think it would be, but I don't know what kid is hearing that and is like, "Hell yeah, word." <laughs> that, that's like a freshman level dorm, like just smoke pot for the th you know, second time in your life, and you just start getting into deep talks about that. Oh yeah, You've been to like philosophy thirteen oh one one time. Yeah, you guys go to the frat house and capitulate to an oppressive system. I'll be here watching Saturday Night Live or something like that. <laughs> there was a lot of moments uh, in this movie where you're like, yo, seriously, who, who is this movie made for? Why were they line dancing to Guantanamera? It's <laughs> a good question. It's, I mean, it goes crazy, but like, it just seems like an interesting song to choose for the line dancing yeah, scene. I feel like most children's movies tend to have... Uh, you know, I, I could take away for kids that's, you know, at a kid level. Um, what was the take? Like, what, that's what's, people what's like the Ted message Lasso. here? What, what's the message here, <laughs> you know? Yo, I think it's like, ge like genocide bad. <laughs> if there's somebody who's like, hey, I'm deciding I'm marrying this person and also I'm going to kill a bunch of people, then maybe side up with the other side. It's a good takeaway for the kids. Also, this movie was a little bit ahead of its time in 1998, I believe. Um, we're already talking preemptive strikes in this movie, <laughs> yes. which would come to prominence about four, four or five years later. It, it I was like, because at first I, I didn't realize when it was made, I was like, oh, we're going to get some commentary. And then I was like, wait a minute. No, this is not. This is way ahead of its time. Very impressed by that. Because the termite colony, unless I missed this, they did not actually pose a threat, right? No. That was a total... F okay. False flag. They didn't have False beef. Flag. Wow. Yeah. He just needed the bodies to start uh, flying. A real uh, Gulf of Tonkin situation there for all the history buffs. Oh, damn. I'm not really sure, though, like what uh, the general's like motivations were, because it seemed like he had unlimited power as is. And that queen wasn't really doing much other than offering up her daughter, which would have made the general king eventually. It just seemed like my man was very impatient to get his hand on all that power.
No, I mean, I think yeah. he was just like, like he, he sociopathic. Showed his cards a little early. He did too much Adderall and just like took things way too far. I, I will say this, though. Um, when, <laughs> when they're dancing, Princess Bora, who is like unequivocally hot shit in the ant community, asks Z to dance. And Z just like comes to life and is the most confident dancer in the world. Just absolutely fucks out there. We love a comeback story in the first 15 minutes of a movie. <laughs> it may, all we know you is guys that know? Like, this guy yeah, doesn't like, do anything. Can't get out of bed. Why do we have, we have Woody Allen laying on his little bed, like talking to his therapist about how like much his life sucks. And then he goes to a bar, complains about his buddy drinking and then a princess starts hitting on him. It's like, dude, you gotta, you kind of have a good thing going here. Oh yeah, he's dark and disturbed. He's got it's, it's all working. Did you guys know this little fun fact? Did you know that Weedus's seminal hit "Teenage mm. Dirtbag" was actually written about that scene? Wow, <laughs> I did actually. It's amazing. Yeah, I think we replaced, Dylan, replaced dance to Guantanamo with Iron Maiden tickets. Wow, wow. This is the Very only wild. insight that you get from this podcast. <laughs> Deep cuts. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people die. There's a big flood at one point. The general wants to uh, wants everybody to sink into a puddle and drown. That's uh, he he orchestrated the flood, of course, by having the ants dig toward the lake that was going to eventually bust through and flood the whole place. So dark, awesome, dude. It's it, but if you're like low key, if you're a dictator, it's a really strong dictator move to have the people like dig their own grave first. Oh, for real. Like he had them. Like that. That's a heads up play for all the dictators out there. Yeah, like his plan went almost went pretty well, all things considered. Z just really kind of like lucked into spoiling everything by accident. Yeah, he's a bit of a clumsy guy, but he's the hero. Absolutely, no mention of Christopher Walken's character yet. Christopher Walken, really disappointing for everybody. We also have John Mahoney of Fraser fame. Colonel Cutter, mm. um, the general's right hand man, was trying to talk some sense into him throughout the entire movie. Didn't go so well. You, you, well good, good to hear the Walken's voice. Can you through. actually, can you actually uh, recite some lines from that? Oh. Maybe we shouldn't kill all of our people. That was terrible. They're not people; wow. they're ants. Our ants. People pay for this. <laughs> 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 not after this, they're not. You ever see uh, the the Walkman in Gili? Uh No. <laughs> oh man, it's the best. Busts in. He's a cop. He's looking for a missing kid. S- comes in and he's like, I'm "Thinking we go to Murray Calendars, <laughs> have some pie, ice cream." It's the best. Oh, man. It's so much better than mine. This is good. <laughs> this is a lot better than mine. You think uh, Walken and uh, Jennifer Lopez finish Ants, and they were like, yo, we got to work together again at some point soon. Yeah. And they just yeah, and they got like, together for Chile, and they were like, wow, this is somehow worse. This kid, this got to be well <laughs> Probably like 2001 or something like that. Probably like t- 2003. Because they use an internet 1998 reference. 1998 would have been like 2003. There you go. Hey, hell yeah. Uh, yeah, 98 was like peak Affleck so Affleck was busy making all the best stuff at that point man I think one of my favorite things to do is like envision Jennifer Lopez explaining the plots for movie to Ben Affleck in like private conversation like back then they were dating around around that time a little bit later but like imagine if just envision Jennifer Lopez having to explain the plot of ants to Ben Affleck like over dinner and then now envision her having to explain the plot of marry me to Ben Affleck over dinner. She's like, oh, yeah, I just am a pop star, and I fall in love with Owen Wilson, who happens to be in the crowd with a Marry Me sign. Yeah, have you guys, are you guys uh, looking forward to Marry Me? Have you seen the trailers for that one? I have not. I oh, I've, I, I've been lucky enough to see the trailer, and I hate to admit that I'm 100% seeing the Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah no, Hopefully by asked. now we'll, we'll have a, uh, a little... Uh, we, we, we're putting together a super cut of us talking about the movie Marry Me because that is number one on our list. It looks fucking awesome. So we're pumped for that. It's out uh, Valentine's Day, folks. So catch it in only in theaters. They're not going to... You don't waste that on a, on a, on a small screen. Uh, Dan Aykroyd also <laughs> plays a, a wasp. A very, like kind of grown up version of the of that college kid you were talking about Dave it's like all very 
sophisticated and like a uh certainly a lib right definitely definitely kind of but like a reads the new is it the new yorker like a very elitist mm. type yeah it was a it was a whole thing it was it i it went from being my favorite scene to the scene that almost made me cry uh after muffy met her untimely demise Oof. Hmm. like that that seemed a little bit out of nowhere like I don't know. You you knew it was a possibility. Anybody can get got and ants, but damn. Is his name in this movie and character like is it like kind of a tongue in cheek thing? His name's literally Chip the Wasp. Chip the Wasp, yeah. Yeah. Like shouts to Ackroyd though. You know I got love for Ackroyd. How do I have no recollection of his character at all? They're the, was two, the uh, they they arrive at um basically uh it, it that's not the dump, right? They they get somewhere that has like a sandwich and a bottle of coke. Well, this whole movie oh, yeah. takes place in Central Park, and we as we find out at the like end. Spoilers. Yeah, and so like Insect they're just like Topia by the garbage well. can. Yes. Who plays Muffy? I mean, you're right. Muffy gets it. Oh, it's Jane Curtin. Jane Curtin. I mean, not for long. Unbelievable cast. It is, of course. Uh, Chip Chip the Wasp uh, really really saves himself when he. Um, my one note here, uh, fly, doesn't drive drunk, flies drunk yes. with uh, Z on his back. I was like, that's not a good, that's not good. That's not a good message to send to kids. <laughs> no, you should not do that. And it's not like, well, at least at least they uh, made him out to be a, a quite a bad drunk driver, drunk flyer. <laughs> they didn't glamorize him. Right. So there's yeah. that. Uh, there's also, I have a note. I don't specifically remember this like super well. But I just wrote like uh, Woody Allen's character gaslights uh, the princess like immediately after he meets her. He's just like, oh, if you leave, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I have nothing else. <laughs> so I was like, Jesus Christ. Just holding I mean, her emotionally terrible. hostage. I, I, I could not get past... <sighs> I know you have, it's a it's an animated movie. You shouldn't get that into it. But when he switches places with uh, with Weaver, mm -hmm. his buddy, the 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 army ant. Yep. And and it's just like he he's like, all right, well, I'm gonna go. Uh, that's gonna be my one chance to meet the princess. I'm gonna go just blend in now. He doesn't blend in at no. all. Oh, he's jumping up and down, hooting and hollering, waving his arms. But not even that, like <laughs> embarrassing himself. Not only that, like every ant in the army is yoked. And this dude, not to Shredded. size shame, but like, especially coming from me, but this dude is puny as fuck. It's sort of like the uh, the Joker scene in, in The Dark Knight where he dresses yeah. up as the nurse and then he pulls down like the surgical mask and uh, Harvey Dent's <laughs> shocked that it's the Joker. It's like, how are you shocked that that's a worker <laughs> ant amongst all these like Adonises? That was an amazing scene in that movie. Uh, but yeah, and then he found himself on the front lines of a battle. Yeah, within short order, like, like, he was the only one that wasn't Agonis's because they all got <laughs> got him. They all got murdered in a fight. They all got beat up too bad. By also, one of them got beheaded. I think that was Danny Glover's character. He was literally yeah, just yeah, yeah. a yeah. separate head. It's so dark. <laughs> but that can, teaches you. Can, you know, ants, like, can ants live without their body yeah, for right. a certain period of time? I like he was still talking and stuff. I believe that's a thing. I think that was like a little educational part of it yeah he went to go look for his body that's just going to teach a lesson to kids that like they can cut off ants heads and be like no he's fine don't worry about it so another fun fact for y'all i don't mean to hijack the pod but um <laughs> a lot of people don't know this david byrne got the name talking heads after seeing this movie <laughs> that's right that is right <laughs> that is very right yeah tina chris the whole gang they were all they were all on board I'm sorry. It was it was the battle scene that did it. And it, he wrote Life After Wartime about <laughs> Z coming back <laughs> and seeing they're no longer Makes sense dancing. Now. It's it's he comes back and it's like 7:45 and he walks back and says, "Oh, this ain't no party." And they were like, "Yeah, that's cuz the dancing scene is over." Yeah. I mean, if you can really if you go back and listen to Road to Nowhere, like you really understand it now. Yeah. And really, that's probably where the movie stopped making sense, I would say. Right? Mm. Right? Would you say that? 
Chef's kiss. Yeah. <laughs> so lost. I would love yeah, that. <laughs> Let's check in with Dylan and Pete. <laughs> I'm so lost. I, would I love consider to. myself to be pretty decent with talking heads, and like I even got lost there. I just was like entranced by the idea of doing like a 35 minute YouTube video that's like a musical analysis of how the Talking Heads was influenced by ants. Yo, Dave, if you're down, <laughs> how I would do, I like, get here? I watch enough like music YouTubers that I could probably successfully make a video like mocking that style at this point. If you're down, you let me know when. We will throw together a Did You Know That fucking. <laughs> David Byrne came up with the talking heads from there. And then uh, at the end, we could, we, could, we could be like 16 times uh, the talking heads took inspiration from Ants. And at the end, when he's got Bora, spoiler alert, and Weaver's got, I think her name is Azteca. Yeah, Azteca. They argue with each other saying, uh, I've got a girlfriend that's better than, than that. They're talking to everybody else with their girlfriends. Just another way. I'll never turn you down. Whoa. I will do whatever content you want. <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. Uh, well, that should wrap up the uh, ants conversation unless anyone has any more thoughts. Uh, my final thought is just that this movie fucking sucked. I'm just... Oh, disagree. Disagree. Yes. I disagree. thought this movie fucking sucked. I'm going to disagree. That's a disagree. Wow. Okay. I thought this movie I'm was holding my take until the final. All right, yeah, that's what I usually do, but I think yeah, it's quite kinda... clear at this point that I did not like this movie. You kind of the... did something that they would probably portray in Ants, which was shot your wad there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, the one, the one bonus, the one credit I will give to this movie is that it's like forty-five minutes long. It's a quick read. It's great, yeah. It's a yes. light read. It's a great way to spend 83 minutes. I think that's how that's they got it out before a bug's minutes, life. But it's a way to spend 83 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They. <laughs> They put it out, and like Bugs Life was still editing. They were like, "What the? Oh, our video is still rendering. How does that out? Oh, is yours like a lower quality or something? And, oh, it's just the movie's just done." Ants, ants exported at like seventy five percent and cut out the last third of the movie. Yeah, and they were like, "We're we're putting this out first. First one done." Did they? Did they put a Z at the end of ants? To like make it edgy? Maybe it's or for is this Z. some sort of play on Woody Allen's character? I think it's a play on Z. Woody Allen's character. It could be a oh, misspelling, also, maybe. <laughs> just poor they, they, put it they just so rushed it out so yeah. fast that they misspelled it. <laughs> yeah, they were like, "Yo, you know that you gave Azteca a different name in like four different scenes." And they're like, Sh "Every time you, every second you're complaining, the a Bug's Life is getting ready to put their shit out. So just put it out and whatever." So that's ants. Let's pivot to a Bug's Life, which uh, obviously. Ants has uh, has Woody Allen not to be outdone in the <laughs> since canceled movie Legends. A Bug's Life has Kevin Spacey as yes. Hopper, a grasshopper who is uh, the main foe. Yeah, at least he movie. plays the villain. Yeah, and, and Ants, the, all, the, all these bugs are ants, which is similar to Ants, I suppose. But um, I'll just say right off the top, little more extortion than I was expecting in the beginning of a kid's movie. Not a lot more, but a little little more extortion. The ants are kind of hanging out, minding their own. Uh, the main character, who's played by uh, Dave, um, Dave Foley from Kids in the Hall, Foley. is an inventor. And he's like, yo, look at this invention I made, blah, blah, blah. And of course, you're like, I bet that's going to fuck everything up. It fucks everything up. And... Then Hopper, the grasshopper, played by Kevin Spacey, comes down, and the grasshoppers provide security. Protection. Protection for the ants in exchange for them giving them a bunch of shit, which, that's a, that's what extortion is, right? That's like... Do they, though? Do they do they actually provide protection? No, no, no. They, they don't. say that they do, but it's they don't. The old, like, they don't even live nearby. It's like a f whole flight away. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's like... It's it's gangster shit where, like, you go by a store that's opening and say, like, hey, your store needs security. We'll provide it for X amount per week. And then when they say, well, no, thank you, we don't need security, you're like, oh, let me tell you. <laughs> you need security because <laughs> this is where it's going to come from, pals. <laughs> so both so like really yeah, two for two the, on like how are these the kids movies but yeah not not quite as dark as ants but uh still some oppression and uh some intimidation and bullying going on here 
uh, a lot of like I'm gonna take your lunch money situation. Hmm. Um, still some some heavy some heavy stuff for a kids movie, I would say, but not as bad as ants. Yeah, like the the threatening to kill the 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 royal the younger princess who is like an infant who can not fly yet. The hopper threatening to kill the the little girl, the baby, was a little much for Hayden me. Hayden Panettiere. Yes, correct. Pre Titans. Was this really her coming out party? This was. There was a lot of buzz for her. She was like the Tremblay of uh, <laughs> of ninety eight. Everyone was bringing her around to award shows. They were like, "Hey, check out Hayden Panettiere," and everyone's like, "Who the fuck is that? I've never seen that kid before." And they're like, "Well, maybe you've heard her." And they play a clip from A Bug's Life, and everyone's like, "She has like six lines. What's the big deal?" What? That, what year was that? Remember the Titans release? Because I always thought that was her debut. I want to say that was like 2002. That sounds about right. Okay. It was 2000. I mean, she 2000. is. She's 32 years old. Yeah. What? Yeah. Feel, Damn. Like, how, how, have I, I, how have I surpassed her? I feel like I was younger than her at one point. Married to a Klitschko, right, Dave? Was. I don't know if that's still going on. I don't know if it okay. is either, but it, it was. Oh, no, they point. were on and off. They were married and divorced, and then they got back together, I believe, in 28, 2013 to 2018. They were back together five years. I was on the old wiki page today. Because, I was going to say, that is some wild yeah. depth I was gonna, When you said you know she was 32, I was like, yeah, as of like four hours ago, I do indeed know that. I also watched Scream I can check TMZ recently. if need be. What's that? I can check TMZ if needed. Hell yeah! <laughs> Sound effects. Yeah, we got it ready. Yo, can we get uh, can we get uh, J Simp real quick? How, how did Do you what? not play Who's that? Jason? How did you not play that when we were talking about the uh, talk of the the sexual uh, oh, fantasies Jason. in Ants, the Jessica Simpson? <laughs> I almost played it when you guys were talking pre-release. <laughs> I thought you said Jason. Like, who the hell are you talking about? No, J Simp. It's what uh, it's what we call her on this podcast. We call Ashley Simp Ashley. I'm trying to bust, I'm trying to come. <laughs> yeah, the thing about it is she's trying to bust and she's trying to come, so. We've all been there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, oh, did yeah. She, was she freestyling there and then she just, like, said something that she didn't mean to say? That's my biggest fear about, like, if I ever tried if to you, freestyle, I think I'd just say something terrible. No, she went if, you, if you read the lyrics to the song she was actually singing, like, it, it's nothing like that. Right. You know what happened? Right. She was trying to sing a Jewel song. With Jewel, who will save yourself, and soul. realize I'm not in Jewel's. I can't hold her jock. Jewel's no. so much better she can than me. Yodel. I'm gonna sex it up. Yeah, that's how I looked at it. Jewel's looking at her like, oh, she's spitting. <laughs> <laughs> no. Damn. She was like the. Uh, she's saying all the things we're thinking. She was like the rap support. <laughs> she like she heard the first part. She was like she heard the I'm trying to bust, and then she jumped on like the try come. <laughs> <laughs> pure ad <Adler's> doubled. <laughs> Oh, shit. That's what happened in that video. You guys can uh, check it up, YouTube.com. Yeah, I mean, I don't have copious notes on on uh, a bug's life. It it is funny though that uh, so the I, I should give a little synopsis of this. So the ants are getting their asses kicked by the grasshoppers, and they gotta do something about about this this grasshopper situation. Everyone's pissed at this guy Flick because he fucked up everything and got the grasshoppers all pissed off. So Flick says. Hey, what if we find some big, strong insects that can fight the grasshoppers? The princess, played by JLD, is like, yeah, for sure. Go find some big bugs. When in reality, she's like, yo, yeah, get the fuck out of here. Go get yourself killed. We hate you. Please leave. He goes to find some other bugs, ends up at a circus, and... You Does, know, an insect yeah, circus. insect circus. <laughs> Doesn't totally get what's going on, but he sees some fat bugs and he's like perfect these are warriors right they go up to him and he's like hey i need you for something and they're like so you're you must be a talent agent so of course we'll take the role and they both agree to do each other's thing and neither one knows what the hell is going on it's simple confusion but i'll say this even if he was confused and there was a misunderstanding he went in there and got the dumbest, most out of shape motherfuckers at that entire circus when he was looking for warriors. He brought them back there and JLD's like, yo, what the fuck did you just bring back to me? This is an absolute catastrophe. This sucks. Meanwhile, Spacey's coming back and appropriately Spacey playing a predator in this one, threatening them, really threatening them. 
He then learns Flick that, oh shit, Spacey Hopper is afraid of birds. We have to build a fake bird. That gets <laughs> fucked up because when they build a fake bird, Spacey comes and he's like, oh, well, that's a little scary. I don't like that thing over there. But where's my money? Where's my fucking money? The ringleader comes. He's like, yo, where the fuck did all my circus people go? Well, you got a fake bird. This thing sucks. Lights it on fire. <laughs> Spacey realizes I am not threatened at all here. And the world is just really coming down on uh, on Flick. Why, why do ants have like have – no? they don't value each other's lives. I mean <laughs> we talked ants. about Flick wanting – like him going and finding, you know, warriors to come back and defend their, their colony or whatever. And they're like, it's a suicide mission. Let's just send him off by himself. Like, this poor kid means well. He might be a little dopey and messes shit up around the colony, but he's a good kid. Oh, totally. He fumbled the bag, Dylan. Like <laughs> yeah. I, he did fumble the bag. There are a lot of parallels between these two movies, but really, like, the, the biggest one is that, like, ants are the biggest cucks of the animal kingdom. <laughs> they just, like, I've... allow everybody to tell them what to do, and they're just like, yes, okay. And they don't value their own independence. And their which movie did they get burned in by the uh, this one? That's this one. Yeah, that was frightening. Yeah, it was. I'm not trying to get that. I'm not. I'm never going to do that again. That one little player got burned to a crisp. Yeah. Yeah. Peace. My only issue with this movie was um, the I guess the ringleader of the circus, mm -hmm. uh, played by John Ratzenberger or voiced by John Ratzenberger, um, a play on P. T. Barnum, of course, of Barnum and Bailey Circus. They they named him PT Flea. Whoa, <laughs> just just really Would, really went out on the creativity. That's like limit. when Shannon Sharp called uh, Antonio Brown Clown Antonio Brown. <laughs> maybe uh, forgetting that uh, maybe there's another part of Antonio Brown's name that uh, sounded a little something like <laughs> Clown. But Clown Antonio That's, Brown was his. Yeah, uh, that his is choice fantastic. There. That's what I was gonna say. Like it, the easy slam dunk there would have been Flea T Barnum. Yeah. No, clown. P. T. Flea, <laughs> unbelievable. P. Flea Barnum, Flea T. Bar, like really any of those hold those those e sounds that are all over the beginning of that name. A hundred percent of that name, that first name. How did they not get? And this seems too easy, but nothing is too easy for these movies. How did they not get Flea to actually voice P. T. Flea? I know. Good call. I think that Flea. You would have been good for that too. He I, does yeah. this kind of and stuff. like height of his popularity too yeah i don't think he was acting yet i don't think that this was like the queen and slim uh baby driver days yet. yeah let's let's find this out no, he was he was at that point he was plotting Speaking on how he was going to uh take down the entire woodstock festival the next summer oh that's a good point Whoa. speaking of height of popularity uh so seinfeld ended in 98 in uh elaine bennis spoilers aka aka julia louis dreyfus uh went from seinfeld straight into a bug's life i guess <laughs> That had been a uh, high dollar get, I would say. Oh yeah, I love her. I absolutely love her. She was great in this She's, movie too. Yeah, when is she not just absolutely killing it? Also, speaking of outside of this uh, matchup, uh, Seinfeld went into insect themed uh, animated movies too. Yeah, B like movie. Fifteen years later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. He was scheming. He was plotting. Pete, you said that like ants are just massive cucks in these movies. They are so trying to let you know that ants are unintimidating and not scary at all that Richard Kind plays a bad guy in this movie. Richard Kind <laughs> plays a person who is a problem for people and not a problem like in the way that like he's like kind he's of fucking everything up. Yeah. He's just kind of like in your way a little bit. He's one of the guys that's coming down to say, where's my money? Yeah. And even Spacey is acknowledging like, yo, we we're the bad guys and we have Richard Kind. That is a tough look for the good guys. <laughs> If we're if we talking about people that are at the height of their popularity, like Elaine Bennis, they got David Hyde Pierce the same year that he won an Emmy. Whoa. That's big time. He was uh Niles? Yeah. Yeah. And he or just slim. played a stick right. in this movie. <laughs> yeah. He did. Played it well though. Man. He's a consummate professional. Do that my big question is does like that insect actually exist? The, a walking stick? Stick bug? Yeah. Stick bugs. Yeah. Yeah. They exist. Never seen a, a stick bug? No. They don't have those up in uh, Massachusetts or what? No, apparently not. They're Dylan's favorite because they look like they're made out of baseball bats. Oh, okay. whoa. 
<laughs> Sick, man. Yeah, those are cool bugs. Didn't man. you have one in a terrarium called Easton? Um, okay. No. That's pretty good. Whoa. That's pretty good. <laughs> Ease hey, settle down, both? boys. We're going to have to separate those two. <laughs> uh, both movies made the same poop joke. Oh, what was it? Well, it was like the play on uh, This Tastes Like Crap. Oh. It was like, yeah, give me some. Yeah. And like the, I, I think that was Ants. And then the other one, it was the, the dung beetle joke. It was just both of them had a little bit of bathroom humor. And I don't care. For yeah, them. it was a little, <laughs> little lowbrow for uh, for. Di- I'll, I'll be honest. We don't do that here. Somebody posted the other day like you never or like uh, like poop jokes are never fu- not funny or like toilet humor is never not funny. I don't know. Honestly, I, I'm probably in the minority here. I think honestly past like seven years old. I've never particularly found like a a poop joke fun. I think like the last poop joke that I laughed at was Hall Pass, just because it was so audacious. What was it? Where the 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 girl sneezes in the bathroom of the uh, the hotel room, and just behind her, it's just oh, yeah. splatters all <laughs> yeah. over the shower wall. She's pooped. Yeah, I thought that was pretty good. It was just so <laughs> unexpected. If anybody yeah, clean it up out there, Hollywood. Yeah, my my son who is six, big fan. Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does like the poop yes. jokes. Interesting. Uh, uh, also last last little one, uh, mosquito drinking blood at a ball. Oh, th- oh, that was yeah. that was pretty great. The jokes hits. the jokes in Bugs Life way better, way more creative than in Ants. They th- I don't know how creative what Pixar is, does but... better than anybody is they figure out those little tiny things and they really hone in on them. Yeah. Yeah. Attention to detail. Ants did not have no. that. You got twisted off that blood though, man. <laughs> But, yeah, he smashed yeah, his head he off the bar. Like, <laughs> Bugs Life didn't have any... <laughs> that, that blood definitely had like hep C or something. That dude was out quick. <laughs> Bugs Life didn't have any like choreographed dance scenes though. So it True. lost a few points for me there. Sadly. That's, yeah, it's unfortunate. that's the thing that ants do. My favorite part of maybe both of these movies combined is when uh, Spacey realizes that bird was not real. And he's like, what the hell's going on here? You got a fake bird to try to scare me away? Oh, uh, you guys are going to get it now for this. And uh, I was going to call him Z, but Flick steps up and he's like, it was me. It was all my idea. It wasn't them. It was me. And just like without a second thought, just like he absolutely gets the shit beat out of him for like... 15 Crumpled seconds. Him. Like, you think that anything else is going <laughs> to yeah, happen just, there? That like, just it's like, oh, shoot, now we got to respect it. Oh, like, who's this guy speaking up? No, no just, he's just like, okay, well, I'm going to kick the hell out of you for this. Yeah, just like sacrificing that, like, the puny kid on the playground to the bully just to get his ass beat. And they're all just watching it happen. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> oh, those shit. Yeah, well, it was his was idea. Was he expecting everyone else to be like, no, I did the bird. No, I did the bird. <laughs> yeah. That bird was pretty dope. By that way. bird like was that bird. that bird for like for uh, what's his name Flick, for a guy who, who an inventor who gets constantly criticized being like, "Yo, you are an idiot. You don't know what you're doing." This is Mona Lisa. That man put together an immaculate bird a in bird. a day's time. It was. A, I have a human brain, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't make a bird like that. Absolutely not. Bird. I mean, last time I made a bird like that, I was mad at somebody. Who? Oh. Gave it to him. <laughs> oh, dude, we're gonna have to blur oh, that man. out. <laughs> Completely coincidental, but I, I, I have to, I have to see myself out to go pick my son up. It has nothing to do with what you've done here, DJ. Okay, but I, I just want to say thank you for having, let, letting, giving me the platform to talk about these two movies, and I love everything y'all do. Hell, hell yeah, appreciate you. Wait, you got to pick a winner yeah. first. Pick- yeah, what's what's your vote gonna be? It's Bugs Life, and it's not close. Okay. Vote's gonna be got Bugs it. Life. Got it. The the ants ants seemed like that they were relying too much on like. Woody Allen being neurotic Woody Allen. Yeah, like, that's Woody, for, sure. As, for sure. But Bugs Life actually had, like we just talked about, little f- actual jokes that they tried to, you know, that were for the for the parents, for the older crowd, that were funny and tasteful. Ants was trash. Mm. Bugs Hell Life, yeah. good. Thanks, See guys. you later. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so uh, I guess to if anyone wants to know how this movie ends, ends uh, so Spacey's like, you can't fool me with that bird shit. That was a fake bird. It's on fire. I'm beat the shit out of everybody. And Richard Kind's standing over there making jokes. Uh, another bird comes by, and it's a real bird. And Kevin Spacey's like, oh, what's this? A second one? Nice try. This bird sucks. And the bird just fucking picks him up and feeds him to other birds. And Quite dark. Spacey like, dies in actually kills brutal him. death. Yes. Eaten alive. <laughs> he had to go down. Yeah. They had to. You got got, man. That was 
you, you sound like Jesse saying to Walt after like Gus had to go. <laughs> or like those <laughs> I forget who says it, but maybe those two guys that uh that Walt runs over. Anyway, dark movies. Dark movies for kids movies, but uh, although I will say a bug's life at least had some like some vibrant colors in it in the presentation. Like the caterpillar was nice and bright and fat. Uh, Dennis Leary playing the mm. the ladybug getting in in uh, like I think that that uh, it has better messages. Like it's like you know embrace your you don't have to be a toxic mas toxic masculine. Yeah, if you're uh, Dennis Leary, <laughs> um, but like no brighter colors. Original Gillette commercial. That's right. Ants was very drab. Yeah, it was like the Schindler's List for children. <laughs> Damn. I cannot wait to make a movie poster for ants and it'll just say the testimonial, <laughs> the Schindler's list for children. <laughs> Dylan. <laughs> I mean, that's that's the vibe it's it's putting off for me. I don't know, man. You're not like wrong. You said the drab colors and the I think he's wrong. Know, the <laughs> evil dictator guy who's trying to you know, well, you get it. He's closer he's to being right than book. he should be. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, I, like much better put together movie for sure is yes. uh, a bug's life. So let's go, yeah, around the horn and uh, see who gets which vote. Will, let's kick it off with you, Dave. Now, Dave has gone a bug's life. Will, correct. I'm I'm a bit of a different beast here. Uh, I don't love bugs in general, and so in terms of these movies being rewatchable for me. I have ants above the other one just because of the absurdity of it. Like, I kind of want to rewatch it again just to nitpick it and find other stuff. But overall, I think the actual better movie is A Bug's Life. But I'm way more into ants for some reason. I could, hey, I, I think that that is a perfectly understandable answer. Uh, Peter. This dude, this dude doesn't like bugs, he said. <laughs> not a big bug so guy. So that's why he loves ants, because they get smoked in that movie. There's this <laughs> exactly, one scene because I know I can just crush tasteful. them. Will just wants to yeah, see it, as it, many was... insects die as possible, so he's leaning ants. Yeah. I was, was actually cheering for Mandible. He was pulling for yeah for Gene Hagman's char- yeah. character and the, the these... flood. He wanted the flood to actually work. Get these out of here. Uh, <laughs> for me, I'm, I'm, I'm closer to Dave Ruff here. Uh, it's not close. A Bug's Life an infinitely better movie uh, for me. It just like, I don't know what ants was trying to do. I, I agree with Dave when he says like, you know, the, the biggest selling point for ants was we got Woody Allen, but like how many kids are going to go for that? Not even for the obvious reasons. Like how many, how many kids are going to be like, Oh, Woody Allen. I bet this movie resulted in like thousands of parents having to like, expl- like mansplain to their kids. No, this is actually great. Because Woody Allen is this and this and this. And you just don't get it, you dumb fuck. Well, Maybe when you're older, you'll learn to appreciate ants. The kids clearly appreciated it. The kids gave it a 92 on Rotten That's Tomatoes. Right. Um, I just read that I just read that Sarah Jessica Parker read for uh, one of the or for Sharon Stone's part and she was fired for unknown reasons. I feel like those unknown reasons are definitely just Woody Allen. <laughs> Probably. Damn. It's a good bet. Is that, I think. Is that real? Yeah. Damn. Okay. Like that. I just read that on Wikipedia or on uh, something. So I'll go next. And I think that as works of art, Ants is far, far superior. What? Way more interesting. It's unlike other kids' movies. It's presented as a kids' movie, but it's this like really weird troubling thing with like some really heavy shit and as as dave said it's not even like it was used as a vehicle to explain to kids like hey when mommy and daddy are watching the news like this is what's going on in the world and this is what happens like no they were just envisioning some wild ass shit and i think that artistically ants interests me a lot more than a bug's life a bug's life is a good cute kids movie pretty dark still but ants i would say ants has my vote making it two two wow. let's go wow. leaving it in the wow. hands or uh Ooh, wait what, what did Give it to bugs me. have for hands the hands hands i <laughs> yes that's yes. exactly what they pin your mandible you can picture it up with that yeah yeah um you can probably guess what my vote's going to be. Uh, for my money, A Bug's Life was just a much, much better movie. I just think Ants was just too dark to be a kid's movie. I picture, like, two parents taking, like, eight-year-old 
you know, to see this movie all excited. And then like half an hour in, they look across at each other like, what the fuck are we watching? Like, this is not appropriate for our child. Um, just the animation was, was drab and, and just not near on the bug's life, a bug's life's level. Um, yeah, it's for me, it's, it's not really, um, yeah, it was just more fun. It was a more fun movie. Not as dark. Yeah. But dude, ants own so much real estate in your head. <laughs> I, I, I'm still, I still can't believe everything that, that went on in that movie and that they, they Made it for children. I feel like before you go to bed every night, you're just texting DJ being like, dude, I can't believe this movie. <laughs> just hear Gene, Gene Hackman's voice in my just head. Just kids like six <laughs> years after they see ants are learning about like the Holocaust in school and they're just like speaking like, up to oh. the teacher. Oh, so this is like yeah. ants. <laughs> yeah, this, this story sounds really familiar. Yeah. Right? Where have uh, I seen this yo, before? Yo, can you change everybody in the Washed Media fam, Brett, Randy, everyone change your... Uh, alerts on your phone to various Gene Hackman in Ants clips. So throughout the day, <laughs> Dylan is just constantly hearing like horrible things from oh my Gene God. Hackman. We need to make the colony pure. Every now and then, yeah. like every now. That's the line. Go ahead, Pete. That's the line that stands out to me the most. Like wanting a pure colony while orchestrating this, you know, genocidal uh, flood. Like what the fuck's going on here? It's it's horrible. Yeah, they're it's, not hiding what they're not, talking about. Yeah. No. <laughs> it, it, it's horrible subject matter. Um, I think, though, I think that the kind of crude uh, visual of it, like that it clearly is early in the anime, in the like non-Pixar animation game. Like maybe this was the first attempt at trying to, to, to take that on. The fact that it's done crudely, I actually kind find kind of charming. I think like if I were to tell somebody like, yo, that movie Ants, you probably never saw it because you saw A Bug's Life instead, but that movie's fucking nuts. <laughs> I bet if they went and watched it, they'd be like, yo, what the fuck is this? Like, it looks <laughs> weird. It's insane. Like, Ants, I feel, should have like midnight screenings and shit like that. Yeah, has it has it caught on like a... You know, like an older, like a secondary older crowd, like cultural movement behind ants. I, That's what I'm saying. Know? Like, do like, it should yeah, have like I, a cult yeah. following. That would be very concerning to me because it would seem like people are subscribing to the message that's being presented You're in right. ants. And I wouldn't want people gathering at midnight to be like, hell yeah, pure colony. No, no, you're not. So you're doing the thing that people do now where like if there's a bad guy in a movie, people will be like, I don't know how you can watch that movie. It has a character who does this. And I'm like, yeah, well, that's the bad. That's the person that we're not supposed to like. So Gene Hackman, nightmare in this movie. Just, uh, that's not going to work. I was going to say, just say you're a Woody Allen guy. <laughs> so, so just say you're, <laughs> no, you can't do that. Say, you can't do say that. Say you're a Sharon Stone guy. Right? That's Princess Bora. Say you like Azteca. Just say you ship uh, Sylvester Stallone and, and uh, Jennifer Lopez. Yo, I think that they lasted longer than Z and Oh, definitely. Bora. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm happy that Z and Bora got together. I don't know if that's their last relationship. I think that, I think that Stallone and J-Lo wrote it out. Yeah? <laughs> okay. Dylan, you got any fucking thoughts? Yeah. You, you got anything you want to say here? I mean, for, for them to... Uh, to get past the initial kidnapping situation, talking Z and princess situation. Uh, what a, what well, they've a, got a name for that. There. It's called yeah. Stockholm Syndrome. They yeah, do. yeah. yeah. It's, it's just actually a very interesting concept. <laughs> that's movie, exactly man. what he did. <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> if I were to guess, if you were to say, hey, you guys are going to watch two movies that are basically exactly the same, except one of them is horrifying and overall a weird to look at catastrophe with a lot of things that could keep you up at night. I would have guessed it would have been three, two that the, that you guys would have voted for the good one. And that will and I would have voted for the psycho weird one. <laughs> You're not wrong. I think that like, this is actually a pretty fitting vote. That feels about right. We're, yeah. We're on different yeah, waves built different. Maybe a little bit, I would say. Kind of march. People are talking. March into the beat of our own uh, dance Let's circle. Talk. I don't know. People are talking, Dylan. Oh man. Uh, last one. Does this remind you of when the two Firefest documentaries came out at the same time? 
I almost mentioned that earlier. Like, I mean, that that was exactly what happened between Netflix and Hulu, right? They were both just like trying to get that Firefest documentary out. Yeah. And uh, Olympus now, Has it, Fallen versus uh, something uh, like White House or whatever. Batman. There was uh, like two. There were two movies about the 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 president being like taken hostage inside the White House that came out in like months apart a few years ago. What about? Don't they have something to sort this shit out? I mean, I, th- think. I think it becomes like a like a pissing contest. Like, remember when National Treasure and the other one with the uh, Declaration of Independence were coming out like within like three months of each other? There were two movies where someone stole the Declaration of Independence. Yeah. I forgot. What's the other one? Um, I think Declaration was in the... Uh, I do declare. And the, uh, National Treasure destroyed it. Did you... I hadn't heard of the other one. You haven't one. heard of I do declare? No. No. Damn. So Olympus has fallen versus White House down. In Olympus has fallen, terrorists attack and infiltrate the White House, and only a disgraced Secret Service agent stands a chance of stopping them. In White House down, terrorists attack and infiltrate the White House, and only a wannabe Secret Service agent stands the chance of stopping them. Wow. So the only (laughs) difference there is that one of them is a disgraced one, and the other one is a wannabe one. (laughs) Those That's totally different. Guys, I googled I do declare movie. Um, I didn't. It's there isn't one. (laughs) <laughs> sorry guys <laughs> fuck oh you crushed that man fuck all right well we'll have to edit that out well this is now that a disgraced embar- movie podcast very embarrassing but <laughs> i don't know how you're going to recover from this financially this, oh my god the circling back boys thank you so much for doing this we love doing shit with you guys you guys are funny when you do podcasts and everything you know you guys are also funny when you do podcasts and other things too. Oh man, you got, you're so nice and stuff. It's wild. Yeah, D- DJ, remember when y'all had me on? When we were doing Dylan on Dylan, and I was about to compliment you, and then someone <laughs> someone over talked me or whatever. No, this is a different one, Will. <laughs> and then like 30 seconds go by, conversations going on, and then and DJ goes, "Hey, back there, were you gonna compliment us? Let's back that up." <laughs> <laughs> It's like, yes, I was gonna say you guys are really funny. That's a- See, I I more like it when DJ starts hyping. <laughs> The dude's about to just yeah. absolutely yeah. That, drop a bomb on your face were, with some funny. Do you remember what? Do you remember yeah. what the fun fact was? <laughs> oh come on! Oh my god! Um, remind remind me. Who it, sings backup vocals on Sixth Avenue Heartache? Which is obviously, I forgot. Pete, just tell it's me. It's Adam Duritz of the Counting Crows. Yes, yeah. man. Of course. You should. Everyone should know yeah. that. Yeah, the we've been doing this long enough that sometimes we'll race each other to the exact same point, and then whoever spits it out first, the other one's mad and like won't yeah. even laugh at the point because they were hoping that they would be able to be the one to get it. You said something that was like loosely related to possibly, like maybe even possibly, like a did you know thing, and P was like, "Well, did," and I was like, "Oh, I hear it comes." <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> It's just his, his go-to, did you know, fun Look fact. It, like parties, we were, he just busted uh, out. A, a, like a month or two ago, um, we were out and some there was a brunch listener. who was a super nice guy. And he asked me to say that Adam Duritz was singing background <laughs> vocals on 6th Avenue Heartache. He was like, dude, like I hate to do you? this, but like, can you say it? And I was like... <laughs> Do I have a catchphrase? And he was like, you know what it is, man. Just come on. <laughs> and I was like, oh, and people were standing around talking. I was like, oh, hey, I hate to interrupt, but did you know that uh, Adam Duritz sings backup vocals on 6th Avenue Heartache? And the guy was like, yo! It was awesome. He did the thing! That guy was so nice. Man. That's amazing. Yeah. So thanks, everybody, for listening. Yeah. And just, uh, hope uh, hope you're now encouraged to watch one of those movies. I don't know. I think that if anything, people are going to go watch Ants. Yeah, off of this. I think people are going to be more uh, morbidly intrigued by Ants. <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. I think yes. so too. Yes, I think I think that's just. All right, bye. We love you. Thanks for having love us, you guys. Too. Love you back. See bye. ya.